In this movie, we're going to look at um, a, a different perspective of chair structures uh, that I think is helpful um, because it helps kind of merge some of the ideas that we talked about in the last module with the ideas that we're talking about in this module. So in particular, we're going to talk about something called the double Newman projection. And double Newman projections uh, um, always sound a little intimidating at the start, but all they are is just a way of using a Newman projection to analyze a chair structure. Um, and what that really takes advantage of is if we look at a chair structure, you can actually sort of rotate it so that you have, oh boy, this is tricky on the screen. Maybe it's because I'm a little twisted here. Okay, what we have here is there are certain angles where bond, bonded atoms are actually overlapping with each other. And so they start to actually take on a character of something that we would typically look at in a double Newman projection, or excuse me, in a single Newman projection, which is what we've looked at in the past learning module. So getting into it now, um, what we see is that uh, the, way, the way I wanna start this is to think about um, just in general how we would use a Newman projection to analyze a chair structure. Again, I think Newman is somebody, so I should capitalize that, excuse me. So using Newman projections to analyze chair structures, allowing us to see something called the double Newman projection. And this is something that students um, at the start think of as is think of as sort of highly intimidating but it's just um, it's just kind of using what we did before that is Newman projections in the last learning module and then just fitting two of them together and connecting and we, we find a way to connect them well let's just get into it okay so I'm gonna draw a chair structure and I guess I'm going to consider the wedges and dashes on a chair structure now you don't add wedges and dashes to the actual substituents as we talked about before instead what you do is you add you could add wedges to the lower three bonds and dashes to the sort of raised three bonds to show that some of the two of the atoms there and there are in the back whereas here and here are in the front i want to get rid of those shapes so that i can start to consider why I would want to look at this as a Newman projection. Well, let's envision that we've got sort of two eyes. We've got one eye that's looking down this bond, and then we've got a second eye looking, ooh, I didn't draw that second eye in a good position. And I have that second eye looking down this bond. And so what we have is sort of our eyes kind of tracing down two separate bonds in our chair structure. We have, I guess, a green eye and a yellow eye. Now, if we're looking down bonds, carbon-carbon uh, bonds such that one atom in front that we show as a dot is directly overlapped with another atom that we show as a circle, we can depict this as a Newman projection where we've got a dot with a circle around it for the carbon-carbon bond that one of our eyes is looking down along with the dot, the circle around it for the bond that our second eye is looking down. And so it would turn out that in this case, the dot and circle around it with um, on the left side corresponds to the green, I guess, eye and then the yellow eye is the dot with a circle around it on the right. And the reason why is because we are looking left, starting, lefting, <laughs> we are looking left, writing and talking at the same time, excuse me, looking left. That is our eyes are positioned to the right of the structure, they're turned and they're looking from right to the left. We're looking to the left and as a result, just like what we saw before, wedges, are on the left. What wedges? Well, it's the wedges in our chair structure. The wedges that are shown here and 
there's the dashes shown there. So when we um, actually roll both eyes over to get a front perspective of them, the eyes corresponding to the lower two atoms, in this case, are going to be on the left side and the eyes to the, that are raised or behind are on the right side because they're dashes and wedges. So what I'm trying to do is get us oriented to which side is which if we have um, two Newman projections working together as what we would see in a chair structure because the bonds are parallel to each other. Now, how do we actually show the chair nature of this molecule? Well, if you recall the dot with a circle around it has um, a vertical substituent and two diagonal substituents. Well, if you look, the dots don't have anything outside of the chair bonds connected to them. Well, if we look at the chair bonds and we had to say, um, if we look at the chair bonds, we would note that there's this sort of pucker or flap, and this is the connecting atom and it's connecting the two dots to each other. And if I said, is it, point, is it an up flap or a down flap? You would say, it's a down flap. And so to show the connection of those two dotted atoms, we just draw a flap pointing downwards, and this corresponds to the right flap. And again, it's down. Now going back to the circles, the circles are connected by this atom. So this atom connects the circle atoms together in our Newman projection, and it is the up flap. So the up flap is connecting the two circle atoms together. So I just draw what I see, a flap connecting the two circles. And again, it, it uh, connects to the circle, so it's going to stop at the circle, which I show right here and right here, as opposed to going all the way inside to the dot. Rather, the dot is connected by the front flap that's pointing, excuse me, the right flap, right in this case, that's pointing down. So the circles are connected by the left flap, which is up. The dots are connected by the right flap, which is down. And we saw that in both depictions, the chair structure depiction, as well as this kind of um, Newman projection. Okay, so with the Newman projection, remember, we have to, after we sort of add our dot with our circle, we need to add all of the substituents. We can't have things left over. So what I'm saying is if we go to this dot, which I'm high, I, I, should, I could um, highlight, if we go to the dots, we need three groups attached to the dots and three groups attached to the circles. One of the dots is the connecting line that connects the two dots together. That's actually going to define the positions of the other groups. That is, there has to be a position down and to the right because there were 120 degrees separated and then one, one uh, pointing straight up so that we're 120 degrees separated from the two diagonal things. So similarly, we have diagonal here and straight up here. So, we have these groups now attached to our dots, and we need to add the atoms that are connected to these groups, and it's just hydrogens. We don't have to draw the hydrogens in our chair structure because a chair structure is sort of a perspective bond line structure. But in our Newman projection, we need to fill in all the blanks. Similarly, we could go back to the circle and recognize that the flap actually defines where the other two positions are going to be. We're going to have a flap up and to the left, and then straight down when we on the left side or the left circle, the right circle is going to have up and to the right and straight down. This maintains 120 degrees apparent separation between any two groups that are attached to our circle atoms. We then just sort of fill in the blanks. So that is a double Newman projection of a chair structure where our eyes are looking from the right side of the molecule towards the left side of the molecule down the two parallel bonds. Okay, so what I want to do is kind of um, give us some tips for how to draw these things, and we want to make things more complicated than just cyclohexane. That is, we want chair structures with groups attached to them. So steps for converting 
between double Newman and chair. So we first recognize that um, we need to first identify the dot and circle carbons. So if we're given a chair structure, the bonds that we're analyzing are always this bond and this bond. Okay, always. So it could be those two or we could have a chair flip. And in the chair flip, this bond, it's this bond. Okay, so those are the bonds to be analyzed. And it's only ever those bonds. You don't, you don't analyze the other bonds using a double Newman projection because it gets a little complicated. Plus it doesn't really make sense. You can always roll the molecule around horizontally so that you've got, um, if, if for some reason you wanted different bonds, um, they always have to be parallel and across the ring from each other. And you can always roll the chair structure around so that you get this orientation. Okay, so those are the only bonds to be analyzed. So to find the dots with a circle, we need to find our eyes or add our eyes. That is to say, which way are we looking? Okay, so I think in, in this case, I'm going to have eyes on the sort of outside edges. So I'm going to have eyes looking here, this, that first eye just is not very good because it doesn't really line up with the bond. It's just, I want it to line up right here with this bond. So I'm just gonna drive it back here. We'll do the same thing, but um, I guess we're gonna have, that's okay. It's different from the first, the very first example. So we're gonna have bonds, uh, analyze this bond and this bond. And so the lower bond in each case, which I'm highlighting in magenta, is always the front or wedged carbon. And then the raised bond that we're analyzing is always in back or the dashed bond. So this corresponds to the wedged bond. This corresponds to the dashed bond. Always the raised one is dashed and the lowered one is wedges. This is just how we do perspective drawings for chair structures. We prefer to tilt things this way as opposed to this way, if you're wondering why. It's just a rule of, um, it's just a rule that we've kind of done to make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay, so we have the wedges and the dashes identified. What that's going to do in our eyes drawn, what that's going to do is allow us to draw our dots with our circles around it. Now the dot with this, the dots are always the first things that our eyes encounter in a Newman projection. And the circles are the second atom that we encounter in a Newman projection. So um, we've now seen our dots and our circles. And we've, by doing that, we added our eyes. And then we are going to, in step two, draw the double Newman and identify left and right sides from the chair structure. Okay, so our double Newman, and we have two of these going on right now. So we have two dots and two circles, and they're gonna be connected by a flap either up or down at the dots, and then conversely in the opposite direction at the circles.
okay? So if we look at our um, first example, we see that where our eyes are looking right. They're positioned on the left side of the chair structure, but they're progressing from left to right. They're looking right. Similarly, we're looking to the left. We're looking to the left in the second example because our eyes are positioned on the right and our eyes are moving from the right side to the left side. We're looking left. Okay, so if we're looking right in the first example, our wedge is on the right, which means magenta goes on the right, and yellow goes on the left, because yellow is the dash. The raised bonds are, are the dash, the lowered bonds are the wedge. And we're looking to the right, so our wedges are on the right. Similarly, if we're looking left, our wedges are on the left. In this second example, leaving our dashes on the right. So we've now correlated the front, the, the kind of lower or wedged bonds on our chair structure to the, to the um, uh, left side or right side of our double Newman projection. We did the same thing for the raised or dashed bonds. So we've identified where the left side and the right side is on the chair structure. Now, it should be noted, it's just, it's easy to, to kind of get tripped up on this, the double Newman projection always has a left side and right side that's just left or right. So we have left or right. Now, how are the dots connected in either case? So it turns out that in both cases, the dots, which are the first atoms that um, our eyes bump into, are both connected by an up flap. By an up flap in both cases. So the dots are connected by an up flap. And we show that in our double Newman projection by connecting the dots with an up flap. That's going to then allow us to define where, and, I, and this should be step three, I guess. So maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll move this into, I don't know. I kind of like it because my color is already there and you've already probably drawn it. Okay, so step three is connect the dots and circles with flaps. Okay, so we connected the dots with flaps and those were up flaps. Now the circles conversely, it's always the opposite. The, con the circles will be um, the opposite. So if the dots are connected with an up flap, the circles are going to be connected with the down flap. And I get that from the chair structure. I just look at the chair structure and be like, okay, so at the circle carbons, the second carbons that my eyes bump into, the flap that's connecting those two atoms is in this case pointing down. So I just go, start at my circle and I just connect the circles. Okay, so then in step four, we're going to add the remaining positions to the dots and the circles. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, I'm going to redraw this down here. Actually, I'll go to the next page. Okay. So what I'm saying is if we look at the dot and we know that the groups have to be 120 degrees separated, I will have to go here and here, a down vertical position and then a diagonal position pointing up and to the left and to the right on the opposite side, but still a down and vertical position. And, and again, it's the flap that defines where the other groups go and how the other groups are positioned on our double Newman projection. Now on the circles, we use this first, we use this flap as the first group to then add the remaining two missing groups. And we could do that for both of our double Newman projections. At this point, they look identical. And then in step, I think I'm at step five. 
step five, you fill in the blanks. So H is in this case. Okay. Now, what I want us to pay attention to before we look at some examples of this is that we should take stock and recognize that, oh, I didn't do this side. I'm just gonna add the H's. We should take stock and recognize that the, that the Newman projection, while it's cumbersome to learn at first, but then once you get the hang of it, you're like, okay, the flaps are connected. There's a left side and right side, that sort of thing. The thing that's really nice about double Newman projections of chairs is that they're always staggered conformations. So note that chair structures always give two staggered conformations. So if you look at our double Newman projections, the way that the H's are arranged, it's a staggered conformation on the left side of our double Newman projection and the right side, right? All of the hydrogens are split perfectly between the uh, two, um, the two hydrogens, excuse me, or the three groups on the back carbon, and then likewise the front carbon. We can see that sort of, uh, let's do this. Okay, there we go. I'm at least properly arranged. I never know how to hold this. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see if you look at these two bonds, I can orient it so it looks mostly staggered. Now what's cool about this is I just picked two bonds at random. I could roll the molecule around and get to another conformation. And in this conformation, we're staggered. Roll it around again. These two bonds are staggered. Everything is staggered, that's the point. Okay, so I'm gonna have to cross this out and recognize that all atoms have staggered conformations. So every atom that's in the chair structure of our six-membered ring is in a staggered conformation. This is why it's so stable. This is why chair structures are so stable. Okay, so they're all very stable, which is, um, as, which is a result of us having positioned everything to be in the staggered conformation. And by stable, I mean low in energy, um, easy to come by. It's like taking the bowling ball and putting it way down in the shelf because, uh, yeah, that, that's just kind of how it, how it uh, is positioned. So um, what I wanna do now is just draw a boat structure and ask the question, why is the boat structure so unstable? And it turns out the answer is because it has eclipsed conformations at, I believe, at many atoms, let's say. Huh. Well, let's do the double Newman projection of a boat structure. Ah, that looks bad. Okay, so boat structure, we draw the middle line sort of shorter. Okay, so once again, we've got three bonds and the lower three bonds are in front. The raised three bonds are in back. Okay, and we now have a dot with a circle, dot with a circle if our eyes are on this side. Maybe I need to make this bigger. 
like it's a little sloppy how I've got it drawn. Just boat structures are just awkward because you have to draw that central bond so short. Okay. So we have our wedge and our dash bonds, and I'm saying we're gonna put the eyes on the left side and look down the right. That means the first carbon we bump into is gonna have a dot here and a circle. So when we do our double Newman projection, we're gonna have two dots with circles. Okay, now how are the dots connected? The dots are connected with an up flap. And a circle is connected with an up flap. Okay, so far not so bad, but this is looking a little gnarly. And that's because if we add the remaining missing positions to the dots, so far so good, except for the circles, we have to do groups very similar, except they stop at the circle. But they're otherwise positioned in very close proximity, and that's because Both bonds are eclipsed. So I wonder if I, I haven't played with this long enough to know if it, so I believe it's just the two central bonds in the case of the boat structure that are eclipsed. So I've got a boat there. Hopefully you can kind of tell that they're eclipsed. But then if I just focus on the pucker, the pucker doesn't, I would have thought the pucker wouldn't have, would have been a little bit more staggered. Maybe not. I will have to model that. I'm kind of curious now. I think it, I think it can be staggered from the pucker, which is why that boat structure in the cent is in the center of our energy diagram isn't as high in energy as the sin conformation that we saw with the butane energy diagram. Okay, um, so that's an introduction, I guess, to double Newman projections. Um, what we're gonna do in the next lecture is practice converting back and forth between double Newman projections and chair structures when we've got groups attached to both um, depictions.